Amen, amen. Well, a few years ago, I had the privilege to hang out with one of my kids and take him to an Iowa State football game. And man, it was just, you ever have those moments in your life where you, you, you're doing something really awesome and it starts out amazing, but it doesn't always end that way? Have you ever, have you ever had, you know, maybe it's a vacation. I mean, we heard about Cap's debacle a couple weeks ago. This is just a one-day trip, but got to uh, take my kid over to Ames, Iowa. It was, it was awesome. For those of you that, that don't know my story, uh, I played for the Cyclones. Yeah, you can boo now. It's okay. I get it. Yeah. Somebody asked for permission if they could boo. I said, yeah, go for it. It's all good. It's all good. 9-7. That's all I'm going to say. 2009. It's okay. Nine turnovers. Don't worry about it. Oh, some of y'all Nebraska fans. No, oh, okay. Let's get back to the teaching here. So I had the privilege of, of taking one of my kids over there. It was awesome, so cool. Um, my parents have season tickets, so they were there, and of course they, uh, they got my kid an Iowa State jersey, and it was you know, so much fun. We're just like celebrating at the game, it's just having a blast, the music, it's just amazing atmosphere. It was awesome. It started out as one of the like, best experiences ever as a dad, hashtag dad life, it was amazing. After the game, we drove to Des Moines, we had dinner with my family, and then, of course, we stopped at an ice cream shop, because you gotta do that before you get in the car and drive two hours. Huh, MJ? Right? Cookie dough, double cone, waffle cone, all the things. Put some fudge on it. Anybody with me? Any ice cream fans in here? Yes, yes, yes. It's, we're getting close to summer. I think Dairy Chef is open, but. So we get some ice cream, and then we're at the place, and I notice now, just a little bit of context here. We were kind of in, transitioning in that potty training phase, and so we <laughs> yeah, you know where this is going. They start doing that, like, clenching the butt cheeks, walking like a duck. You're like, okay, something isn't right here. Hey, hey, buddy, like, do you need to use the restroom? No, I don't. Okay, remember, we had issues with this one. So it was like, okay, um, well, I'm gonna take you in the bathroom anyways because we're gonna try before we, before we you know, hit the road, okay? Are you with me? Let's do this, you got this. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the dad that's on my knee in this restroom, like, and there's nobody else in there because it's one stall. I'm like, I mean, the people outside the thing were probably like, what is going on in there? <laughs> come on, buddy, you got this. Those of you that know me, you know I'm an encourager, so I'm like, come on, man, you can do this. Like, spirit of fear, we rebuke you. You got this, buddy. <laughs> Come on, you got this, man. He's just looking at me like. So I'm like, okay, you know, I can lead him to water, but can't make him drink it. It's not quite water, but you get the point. So we, we hop back in the car, and um, I'm just praying and like, okay, Lord, just hold, please, please hold him over for a couple hours. Just please help us get home in the name of Jesus. We get about an hour down the road outside of Des Moines, and uh, I just see more grimacing as I look through the rearview mirror, and all of a sudden he starts kicking my seat, and I'm thinking, oh boy, we got a problem on our hands. I'm thinking, buddy, do, do we need to pull off and use the bathroom? No, daddy, I'm good, as he's screaming, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I know where this is going, and I don't know how to stop it. Lord, please help me get to the come and go as fast as I can. Is anybody with me? So I'm driving down Interstate 80, heading west, and I'm like, Lord, please. And the, the kicks are getting faster and harder, and I'm like, I, I'm starting to feel the kicks through the seat. <laughs> Next thing you know, I see the exit. We're about a mile from the exit, and, uh, and, and then all of a sudden the tears come down. I'm so, sorry, Daddy, I didn't make it, and I'm thinking, oh, God. <laughs> it just went from a really bad problem to a like, really, really, really bad problem thinking to myself, oh boy, this day started out great and it's gotten really, really difficult. So I'll spare you the details, but yes, you better believe it. I wasn't in the bathroom like encouraging him. I was probably like scolding him as I'm cleaning him up, just being honest. I was pretty frustrated um, because we had been working through this, this thing with this particular child and I'm thinking to myself, God, what do you want us to do? I mean, we're trying everything. It just isn't working out. I mean, he's just a kid. Give me grace for the kid. Come on, get your stuff together. Like, what's going on? 
I like don't have bags to clean this stuff up, so I'm going out to the counter like, hey, can I get some bags? I mean, it's just, just a debacle. So I, I, I get, get my kid back in the car. It's starting to get late. It's dark. We still have an hour drive. By this time, my heart is feeling furious, frustrated, and there's a piece of me that feel, felt a little bit like a failure. It's so interesting because I can actually put words to those things because I'm a little bit in tune with my heart nowadays. But in the past, you said heart. I'm like, what heart? What are we talking about here? Like, life, what? You, you know, you like, bad stuff happens. Okay, rub a little dirt on it and keep going. Just stuff that thing and keep going, right? Anybody with me? But this particular instance, it just, it stirred me up in my heart and I was, I was frustrated and it, I just couldn't let it go. And as I was preparing this week, you know, for this message that I'm titling Heart Check, I just started to think about how it's, it's certain circumstances in our life and oftentimes people closest to us that we love the most that challenge our hearts the most. Is anybody with me in here? Do not elbow your spouse right now. What was it for you this week? How, how, how did you take care of your heart? Like, what's, as a matter of fact, what is actually going on under the hood right now? Do you know? Have you taken inventory lately? Because, because really, this message can be summarized in one sentence. And it's this. The condition of your heart determines the course of your life. This message is really connected to where we started last week with If Then that Pastor Todd gave from Proverbs chapter three. Remember, we have to understand that in the book of Proverbs context here, Solomon is the writer of this particular proverb and he wrote a lot of Proverbs as we learned last week. But we know that, that Proverbs is really, it's the book of wisdom, it's riddles. It's, it's so interesting because whenever I read one chapter, I'm like, there's so much, I could just like camp out on a couple verses and meditate on that for a full day. Is anybody with me? Yep. But I love the book of Proverbs because it's a great place to start. You guys know that our heart, we just said it, is to develop self-feeders and maybe nobody has ever challenged you to get in your own Bible. This is a great place to start. So in this particular uh, proverb, we see here that that, that God is gonna do a little bit of a heart check on us. He tells us in Proverbs 4, verse 23, we'll cover it here in a second, to guard your heart above all else for what? It determines the course of your life. There's another translation that says, keep your heart with all diligence for it determines the course of your life. It's so interesting when you think about, about the heart. The heart is such a fascinating organ even. I'm not, I'm not talking about spiritual heart. I'm talking about your actual physical heart. And it's so cool that, that God made some of the strongest bones to protect your heart. Your heart weighs only 11 ounces, but it pumps about 200,000 gallons of blood through 60,000 uh, miles of blood vessel a day. That's enough energy. Your heart produces enough energy in a day to move a truck like 20 miles. In a lifetime, that's like going to the moon and back. The heart is actually really incredible. It's, 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 it's wild. But conversely, we know that if this thing stops, <laughs> we in big trouble, right? Like I recently had some blood work done and I was meeting with the doctor and there were some, there were some cholesterol things that were sort of you know, going in the wrong direction. And he's like, do you know like the number one symptom for cardiac disease? It's still the number one killer in culture. And I'm like, no, why don't you tell me? He looked at me and he goes, death. I'm like, geez, okay, don't need this, need this heart to stop. Do you see the importance here? When we're talking about our spiritual heart, we're talking about like our emotions, our, our feelings, our will. This is like the command center of your life. Life flows from it. In other words, if, if right now you don't like the course you're going down or the path you're going down, Remember Craig Rochelle, it's not, he said it's not punishment, it's harvest. It, it's not punishment. The path you're walking down isn't punishment. The course you're heading down isn't punishment. It's just a result of the fruit that, you've, that you're reaping from the seeds that you were sowing. So, so we've, we've gotta take inventory. The condition of our heart determines what? 
the course of you and I's life. This is true. I think it's so interesting because Jesus says something about the heart in Matthew chapter five, but he says that the natural heart is a fountain of poison. Matthew 5, 19, here it says, it says this, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. Apart from Christ, this is often the trajectory that we walk down. But I love this because John 4, 14, and this is good news, assures us that the purified heart is a well of living water. Is anybody thankful for the blood of Jesus? that washes us clean, white as snow, that not only purifies us, but permeates our life. Is anybody thankful for that in this place today? This is what Jesus does. This is what abiding in the vine does. This is what being connected in God's word does. And today in Proverbs 4, 20 through 27, we're gonna see that the condition of your heart is influenced by three things. Number one, what you allow to penetrate it, Number two, what you protect it from. And number three, what path you pursue. Remember, the condition of your heart determines the course of your life. What you put in your heart determines what you produce in your life. Now, I wanna say this, because there's some of you that are like, I don't, the, the heart is complex. I don't even really know what I'm feeling right now. I'm not so sure about this guy. I don't like his khaki pants. He's using words that I don't quite understand. He seems a little too passionate today. Can he just tone it? Like, seriously, our hearts are complex, but here's what I wanna, here's what, here's what I wanna just encourage us with, is that this can seem lofty and spiritual and out of touch, but it is, it's very practical. Like, like, we need to understand that the condition of our heart shows up in all areas of our life. So the way that you and I get on everydollar.com and steward our budget is a result of our heart. The, the way that I engage with my three children tonight, the way that I look at my wife and serve her this week is connected to the condition of my heart. Business owner, the way that you lead your team the way that you cast vision for them, the way that you set goals is connected to your heart. Creative in this place. The way that you create a video, a graphic, write a book, I don't know what it is, but it's connected to your heart. Do you see that the heart is really practical? This isn't lofty, this is something that we need to catch. Let's check it out, starting in verse 20 of chapter four, book of Proverbs. It says this, my child, I love this, Solomon addressing his children, but I think it's interesting because the, the next word that he uses, he says, pay attention to what I say. Anybody got little kids in here? Like, my kids know when I say, hey, pay attention, with sternness. It's, I'm wanting their attention, I want them to focus. See, many of us, we're like children, we're easily distracted, we need to pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Here it is. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Are you letting God's word penetrate deep into your heart? Because if you do, here's what it says, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. I love that God's word is alive and active. And, you know, there's, there's, so much sickness that's running rampant in our culture. And I absolutely believe that there's a place for medicine. I've seen it work in my own life, in people close to me's life. But here's what I'll tell you. The word of God, it's alive, it's active. It can bring you life and healing to your whole body. And when you don't think it's working, approach it by faith. Continue to put this thing deep in your soul and watch how as you put the word of God in you, your root system begins to change and in just a matter of time, you start producing new fruit. See, I, I talk to, to people all the time that get going in this journey. I was engaging with somebody at the gym just the other day and they, they were sharing with me how they've made these adjustments, these changes for the better. But, but they felt the temptation of like, man, God, I'm trying to honor you. Like, where are you at? But we have to understand, it's so interesting, this, this principle of sowing and reaping. 
So many of us, we give the devil like 10 years of our life and two weeks into our walk with Jesus, we're disappointed because he's not moving. You just keep showing up and sowing the word of God into your heart, letting it penetrate day by day, and I promise you, you will look back in five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you won't even recognize yourself. I've experienced it in my own life, but here's the problem. Our culture is addicted to intensity. Come on now, Jimmy John's freaky fast. You can have it your way, Burger, Burger King says. You know what I'm talking about? Amazon Prime. Some of you are ordering packages right now because you're distracted. They're going to be on your doorstep when you get home. <laughs> this is what we expect of God. Come on. But we got we to gotta commit to saying, God, I'm going to show up. I'm going to, I'm going to, there is going to, come on now, there is going to be a well-worn pathway into his presence every single day. I'm going to open up my word. I'm going to plant the word in my heart. I'm going to let it take root. I'm going to memorize that scripture. I'm going to write the scripture on my heart. And just like Jesus said, it is written in regards to the temptation. Lord, your, your word is going to be a weapon against the enemy's scheme on my life. Is anybody with me? He came to give you life and life to the full. And it happens when we saturate ourselves in the word, in the word. The condition of your heart is influenced by, number one, what you allow to penetrate it. You can write this statement down, what penetrates your heart permeates in your life. Now, I didn't fully understand this when I first became a Christian. I came to Christ at Iowa State. Specifically, I was in a Hollywood video parking lot. Yes, when we used to have to go rent movies. You young people, like, we actually had to get in our car, drive to the movie store, stop at the ATM on the way to get ca ca cash, like physical bills. You guys remember this? Yeah, well, I didn't make it in the movie store this night. My, my, my homie started sharing the gospel with me, and that's when my life got transformed. But I'm so thankful from about 07 to 11, I absolutely saw like glimpses of fruit in my life and change in certain areas. But it was so interesting because there were some areas, it was like, it was like the light being flickered on, and there were other areas where it was like, man, I gained some altitude and some victory, and then I'd fall back in, I'd gain some altitude and, and some victory and fall back in. And I didn't understand this at the time, but it was like, man, I was, I was, I was going to an awesome church. I really like desired God and wanted to like pursue him. Our team orthopedic surgeon would host a, a Bible study on Wednesday nights. And, and it dawned on me, I started thinking about this as I was preparing for this message, that I would go to Doc's, Doc Greenwald's house on Wednesday night, like he would wash me in the word, he, he would disciple my spirit, then I would get in my car, and I would bump Drizzy Drake back to the dorms. Some of y'all old people are like, who's that? <laughs> don't go listen, don't go listen. But I wanna talk to my young people for a second. Here's what I realized is I was, I was creating provision for my flesh. So I wanted to be transformed, but I was allowing all that garbage to permeate my heart. It was being planted in my heart and it was permeating in my life. There were certain feels that I got when I would listen to that music and you better believe that I saw the fruit in my life. I was mixing the word and the world. And whenever you do that, it's not a good, it's not a good, uh, it's just not a good deal. And so I wanna encourage somebody, there's a verse of scripture, maybe this is where you find yourself today, because really we all need to take inventory. It's not just about young people, but like what are you, what are you giving access into your life? Because whatever you're giving access is how you form your affections. Is it, is it the word of God? Is it, is it the word of God or is it the world? We know that mixing the word in the world is, is never a good thing. But this is the verse of scripture I wanted to give you. Joshua 24, 23 says, destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. So what do we need to do? There's some things that we need to cut off. We need to let go. We need to erase. We, I mean, there's practical measures. We need to put some boundaries in place. Rich Wilkerson Jr. said this, I love this. If it breaks God's heart, why do you think it will fulfill yours? Wow. 
Now this right here, folks, is why I love the vision of this church. Because you see here, in this text, what penetrates your heart permeates in your life, and what Solomon is saying is let my words penetrate deep into your heart. Will we let his word penetrate deep into our hearts? That's the real question here. So I love our vision of self-feeding. I remember walking into the church in 2011 and being challenged. Let me just tell you, if you're new to the church, my man in the front row has been preaching this message. I just happened to catch it in 2011. When he stood on the stage, I had just met him a few months prior, but I came into the church. I'm like, he seemed like a pretty cool dude. I want to go check it out. And he's like, get in your own Bible. Become a self-feeder. Call me crazy, but I, don't, I took the challenge. I'm like, I'm going to go get to know God in my word. And it began in 2011. Can you believe it? I mean, I mean seriously, like right now, just being honest, me holding this microphone is the fruit of taking that challenge. What could your life look like if you say, you know what, I'm gonna plant the word of God in my heart day after day after day. I believe there are evangelists, there are pastors in this room. Come on, there are parents that are gonna begin planting the word of God. There are business owners that are gonna transform their cultures, that are gonna start honoring God. There are politicians in this room that are gonna run in our city and honor God with the way that they govern. This matters. It matters what we put in in a deep, deep way. Did you know that 40% of Americans say they have never read their Bibles? I like to say this, a dusty Bible is the proof of a heart that has drifted from God. We need to get to know him. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna stop something and we're going to start something. Here's what we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop making provision for the flesh. We are going to cut off anything that's influencing us away from God's best for our lives. Do you, do you believe that? Do you receive that today? And here's what we're gonna start. We're gonna start sowing God's word into our hearts through daily self-feeding allowing it to penetrate deep into our root systems. Do you wanna start experiencing life to the full? Solomon says here, pay attention, listen carefully, don't lose sight of. He says, let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them. What penetrates your heart permeates in your life and when God's word permeates us, it not only purifies us, but check out, and here's number two, it protects us. So, so many of us want new fruit, but we got to get new roots. And it starts with planting the word of God. But I love how the word of God not only purifies us, but it protects us. I'll expound on that here in a minute. But it says this in Proverbs 4.23. This verse right here really brought this whole teaching to life. It says this, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. So number two, the condition of your heart is influenced by what you protect it from. You can write this, this statement down. A guarded heart leads to a godly life. The text here is saying that we should guard our spiritual hearts in the same way that God is guarding our physical heart with the bones that he places around it. In some translations, it says this, that we are to keep it with all diligence. Does anybody just sometimes get sick and tired of how, of how much maintenance this thing takes? Consistent maintenance every single day. Is anybody with me in the room right now? Diligence above all else. This is what he's inviting us into. Some of you are thinking, well, I'm not that diligent. This, this, I'm, there's so many things I'm responsible for. It's just, it, there just needs to be a redirection. A redirection of your diligence. Trust me, I've seen some of your garages. Those things are pristine. Come on, ladies. Your, your nails always look on point. Anybody with me? So you can be diligent. It's just a redirection of the diligence. See, if we don't, it's just gonna, it, our, hearts can, our hearts can get 
like full of weeds and thorns and thistles and if your heart was a garden, I mean, what does it even look like today? Is it producing fruit? Is it producing flowers? Is it being well tended to? Or does it look more like a weedy garden that hasn't been taken care of thorns and thistles and, and all sorts of gnarly stuff? What does it look like today? I remember a few years back, we, we took a vacation to Arizona. And when we came back, the perimeter, like where all the rocks were, were just covered in weeds. I mean, I'm talking like foot high. I'm like, what happened? Well, rain and sun and poor lawn care led to my weed problem. Let me just tell you, I'm talking about like real weeds, not that kind of weed. So I come home and it's just covered. And I'm thinking to myself, like, honestly, the temptation for me was to just take the weed whacker and just whack them all down. Come on. Some of you are smiling because that's what you do, isn't it? You just cut those weeds down. But then guess what? Three days later, they're just, they're back to the same. So I'm like, Judah, let's go pick some weeds. So Judah, he's my, he, I love Judah. Judah's just a workhorse. The guy just gets after it. And so we get down and we're picking these weeds. And uh, we get like three quarters of the way through and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm done. My back hurts. I'm like, I'm just gonna whack the rest of these. We'll get them later. So I'm like, Judah, like we're done. He's like, no, dad, we're not done. We gotta get the rest of them. And I'm just thinking like, isn't that what we, we, what we need God to do is we need God to, to pull out the root so we can produce new fruit. And when the, root, when the root is pulled out and we replace the root of the weed with the word of God, now guess what happens? Not only are we purified, but we're protected. It's the word of God because you and I are called to plant it in our heart. What's the easiest way to do that? It's to memorize it. I saw this firsthand just about a week ago. We went to this wedding. It was, it, was, it was really beautiful, it was powerful. We show up, the wedding just happened to be on the 10th floor and I walked in with a whole crew of people and everybody was at different places and, and some of those folks were like, ah, I'm afraid of elevators and I'm afraid of heights. Like this is not a good combination. And so there was a couple people, you know, a little nervous and I've got my three kids with me and there's one in particular that is a little bit nervous. And so I immediately began engaging him to make sure he's good. I'm like, I'm like, yo, Judah, is there a verse of scripture that we could like, when we feel fear, like what's, and he's just like, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and, he, and he was sharing this like with the people, and it was so cool because then we all get in the elevator, and we're like, we're good. Yes, glory to God. We, the, the enemy wanted to tempt us, but so here's, here's what I'm saying. The word of God doesn't just purify you. It is your weapon. It's your defense mechanism as the enemy wants to take you away from God's best for your life. The, the illustration here is God wants to take you to new heights. It might be 10 floors up, but you need the word of God planted in your heart if you're gonna go to that space and place with him. We've gotta guard our heart above all else for it determines the course of our life. I love what verse 21 in the Passion Translation says. It says, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep in your spirit. This is what we're called to. Psalm 119, you can write this down. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So you might be asking like, how do I, I when, when, how do I memorize scripture? Like, what does that look like? We memorize God's word by meditating on God's word. We gotta slow down. We gotta sit in solitude, we need to soak in his spirit, we need to saturate in his, in his uh, scriptures. And I wrote this down, our hearts are like sponges, it soaks up whatever we sit in. We've gotta sit in his scripture. We need to slow down. Can, church, can I just tell you, even as a self-feeding church, the temptation is to check the box and just get through it, to say that you did it. But the question is, is how, are we getting the word deep into our heart? God was convicting me of this. You know, I was, there's some circumstances that have come up in the last few weeks, and I just felt myself worrying more. 
And in our secondary reading, we're going through the book of Philippians. And as soon as I read Philippians 4, 6, and 7, I was like, oh, snap. I need to memorize that. Because in this season, I'm being tempted to worry rather than worship. And all worship is, is worry in reverse. And so I'm worrying when I should be worshiping. So I need to put some scripture in my heart to fight the worry. And some of y'all know that scripture. So this week, as a family, we memorized it. Listen, this is not hard to do. We can all do this. That scripture says, don't worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, check it, will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Now here's the beauty of that verse, is it actually fits into what we're talking about here. What did it say? His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. We don't memorize for the sake of memorizing. We hang with our Heavenly Father. We get into His presence. We spend time with Him. And when we do that, we experience victory and power and peace that surpasses all understanding, all circumstances. And it's that peace that guards our heart and keeps us at bay. I wanna finish uh, with, this, with this thought from 25. Verse 25, it says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. You heard Cap say this a couple weeks ago, and I, I really believe this to be true. But we are, we are living in an overstimulated, under-disciplined culture. It is so easy to be distracted. Is anybody with me? Anybody in here experienced distraction? I think there's two ways that the enemy would love to get us off track. Number one is through distraction. This is where I, distraction is what opens us up and makes us vulnerable to attacks to our heart. And then and the second one would be deception. The beauty is what we just talked about is you aren't called to guard your heart and your own strength. It's, it's you are empowered by the Spirit of God. He is with you. It's like you have a personal TSA agent. Yeah, I said that. The Holy Spirit is like your personal TSA agent. I, I've, I've gone through TSA it, just traveling a lot lately, and my bags have been getting pulled aside. I remember one time going to Israel where they, they took me in like a back room, and they're like checking me out, and, and, and what the Lord spoke to me is this. There's some of us that need to start stripping down our thoughts to see if they're from God or the enemy. He's your personal TSA agent, not travel security agent, truth security agent, TSA, TSA. Because here's the reality, if we don't, here's what happens, distraction and deception will take us down the path we never wanted to go. And some of us are there today. And so stand to your feet as we close. Because here's where I feel like some people are at in the room. You're coming to the realization that you're not experiencing the abundant life that Jesus has promised you. You're not walking down the path that you wanna go down. And something needs to change. There's some of you where you don't realize that something needs to change. It actually feels like life is butter. Your wife actually likes you, you're making good money. It seems like everything is going okay, but what you're realizing today is the path that you're on is heading towards destruction. So whether it's circumstances that are causing you to ponder a change, or you're just recognizing that, yo, I'm on the path that leads to death, not life, I believe today there, there's a redirection that's happening in hearts. The story I told you about at the beginning, I left the the best for last. Remember, I was furious, I was frustrated, I was, I was feeling like a failure, and I couldn't shake it, it was overwhelming. I was starting to like, almost like get a physical response. So I get in the car and I'm driving, I can't shake this, I'm, I'm upset, I'm, 
I'm feeling emotional, all these different things, and I'm driving down the road feeling all these different emotions, and I see a sign that says, Des Moines in two miles. Now you have to understand, folks, let me tell you, I was heading west towards Omaha. I was at a come and go one hour outside of Des Moines. So your boy drove, drove one hour back to Des Moines after this debacle. It just went from worse to worser. That's not even a word, but I'm gonna say it. It got really bad. Oh, man. In Des Moines, 11.15 at night? Brutal. So what do I do? I get off the exit, and I'm like, I only have one choice. It's, it's a redirection. I gotta go the opposite way. And it was so interesting, God's so kind, but I felt like he spoke to me through that experience. And sometimes, you know what, if I had to drive to Des Moines to get this lesson, to come share it with you today, it was worth it. And here's what the lesson is, is that because I let the fury, the frustration, the condemnation get the best of me, it took me in a direction away from my destination. And I believe that this is how the enemy has killed, steal, and destroyed your life is he's allowed your heart to get away from you. He's taken dominion over your heart and it's taking you away from your destiny, from your destination. He wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could think, ask, or imagine. And guess what? You're finding yourself walking down a course that you don't like, but it's time to check the condition of your heart. It's time to put our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the throne of your heart because he left heaven came to earth and lived the life that you and I couldn't and died the death that you and I deserved. He hung there on that cross, making a way for us to be made right with God. And all we have to do is believe in it by faith. Today, I'm believing there's a redirection that's gonna happen. The Bible says a word that's called repentance. Repentance is gonna happen. Some of you are going in this direction and you're gonna turn and start to experience life, the abundant life what I call the super bloom, the super bloom. There's a desert they're gonna show you here that's in California. This is what it looks like most of the time. What we don't realize is there are seeds laying dormant, and every once in a while they get a rainy season that rains a little extra, and what ends up happening is crazy. Go to the next slide. This happens like every 10 years. Now here's what I wanna tell somebody. The seed is always there, it just need to be watered. And today, you're being watered by the Spirit of God. There's been seeds that have been planted, maybe by your parents, grandparents, a friend. I don't know what it is, but today is harvest day. It's super bloom day. You're gonna come to Christ and begin experiencing the abundant life. And so we're not gonna sing. 